Key West, a destination that bills itself as close to perfect, far from normal. It's a seven square mile aisle located closer to Cuba than Miami, blessed with a seascape that rivals any exotic locale around the world. In 2022, visitors spent a total of 24 million days in the Florida Keys, and Key West is the main attraction. Key West is home to more than two dozen species and is pushing upwards of 1,000 International Game Fish Association world records. Offshore, pick a color, like blue marlin, yellowfin tuna, or red snapper. And that's just the start. On the flats, it's the trifecta of tarpon, bonefish, and permit, the trickiest member of the flat slam. Western Dry Rocks off Key West is a critical spawning site for many species, permit among the most popular. The IGFA has been putting in work to protect Western Dry Rocks from overfishing, and one man is at the helm of this effort. Well, there's a place called the Western Dry Rocks. Uh, it's a really small area, I think it's maybe one to 1.2 square miles. But during the spring into the, into the summer, a lot of species spawn there. Um, because a lot of species spawn there, they're really easy to catch because you have permit in tremendous numbers, a really difficult fish to catch when they're not aggregated for spawning. And one of the main issues is there's a lot of sharks that follow these aggregations and then when you hook a fish, the shark eats it almost immediately. Given that we don't have that many of you know, some of these species left, uh, we thought it was really important to protect them in the spawning aggregation. The IGFA in general is not uh, a major proponent of closing off areas just for the sake of closing off areas. Really what we look for is uh, a really good scientific reason to close it uh, that you know, will we'll realize actual benefits to the fisheries. Polot knows that a successful conservation initiative requires more than just one advocacy group. In my opinion, the most successful conservation projects are when you can bring together groups of people that don't typically come together. Uh, when we can pull in the environmental side that may not appreciate fishing, uh, when we can pull those people in on the work that we're doing, we know we're doing something right. Um, and for me to see you know, something be successful, going back to Western Dry Rock, to see the, the comments that were made from uh, the public in these meetings and to you know, thank us for the work we were doing and saying we want fewer people to fish in this place during this time. Uh, you know, that's not typically what IGFA is known for. So um, you know, to be able to do something like that and then have a large group of people support it and the people that are intimately involved with it support it, then you know, it, it, you know you're, you're doing something right. If everything goes the way Polot hopes, what's the best case scenario? Western Dry Rocks is kind of unique because it sits right on the edge of the reef track and when the fish spawn there, you know, the products of that drift away. And that basically seeds the entire coast of Florida. So what we hope to see is by protecting permit, by protecting mutton snapper and all these other species that, you know, they have more successful spawning and we start to see, you know, more of these younger fish and then as they grow out, this is again pretty new still. Uh, so it's only been a couple years of the closure, but you know, as time goes on, what we hope to see are you know, more of these species up the entire east coast of Florida. Thoughtful and well-planned fisheries management is crucial to future-proofing the Florida Keys and Key West.